We, your children, we adore you, Lord. Our hearts cry, Abba, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for being here. We honor you, our King, our Lord, our Savior. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here and manifesting in people's hearts, taking the love of God and shedding it abroad, taking the peace of God and shedding it abroad in our hearts. Father, we come now and we come to your word. We open our hearts to your word and Lord, we ask you to open your word to our hearts as we give ourselves to you. Holy Spirit, I give myself to you to speak distinctly and clearly what you have for this church, for the body of Christ, for all. In this hour, give us, Lord, our daily bread. Give us the revelation knowledge, Father, that we leave this place changed. Change men and women of God that will never be the same because we've been touched by the hand of God. And Lord, we thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, this morning, as I was getting out of bed, the Lord said to me, my children seek the manifestation and seek not me. That's what the Lord said. I said, I see. He said, Isaiah chapter 40. And that's turn there, Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. Oh, we have to go back to verse 29. Sorry, Brian. I keep reading back up. I always do that to you, don't I? So Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. But verse 31, but, but God, my favorite saying, but God, but they that wait upon the strength, they that wait on the manifestation, they that wait on the healing, they that wait on the vision, they that wait on, we could go on and on, right? I think you're catching what the Lord said to me when I got out of bed this morning. They that wait upon the Lord. Amen. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk, praise God for walking, and not faint. <laughs> you know, as we walk this Christian walk, and we've stressed this before, and the Lord has really placed this on our hearts, that as we walk this walk, it is moment by moment, from faith to faith, from glory to glory, and it's step by step. Amen. Amen. It's just a simple step by step. And I have never, I've never experienced that in my life until here lately when sometimes my leg doesn't work and you take a step and you have to praise God that you took the step. And now we understand what it means, that we are running a race, yes, but it is a step-by-step, step, moment by moment, moment by moment. He gives us grace for the moment. He gives us strength for the moment. He gives us power for the moment. 
You know, I was praying and I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, all the great miraculous healings that were done by some of the men of old, like uh, Smith Wigglesworth and these great men of God that, that raised the dead, that seen miraculous healings, that seen these hundreds of thousands of people healed and brought out of wheelchairs. I said, Lord, what, how did they and what was it? And the Lord said, there's no shortcuts in the kingdom of God. There's no shortcuts. We walk the Christian walk. You have your walk, I have my walk, but it all leads to the throne. And your walk and my walk are not the same. But our destination, our focus, that is the same. He's called some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. He's called some in the body to do this and some in the body to do this. That's your walk. And any time that we try to mimic or we admire somebody else's walk, we've cut short what God can do in our walk. And I asked the Lord about that, and he said, I gave Smith the grace he needed. I gave him the direction he needed. I gave him everything that he needed for that moment. It wasn't that, well, today we're going to go out and raise eight people from the dead, or today we're going to do this, or today we're going to do that. No, he just walked with God step by step, and he was led by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit said, lay hands on the man. And then he was raised. It was that simple. Obedience. Amen. The way that we get to that point is by knowing him. Knowing him more intimately. Knowing him. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. Knowing him comes before the power knowing him. So those that wait upon the Lord, and when we wait upon the Lord, he renews our strength. Instead of, I'm going to go seek the Lord, and I'm going to use him as a, my personal bellhop, and I'm going to wait on him so that way he'll give me strength. Oh Lord, I need peace in my life, so bring the peace. It doesn't work that way. Hasn't worked that way, has it? Because my children seek my hand and not my face. They seek the manifestation and not the one who brings the manifestation. They seek healing instead of the healer. They seek deliverance instead of the one who delivers. They seek strength instead of the one who strengthens them. See how it's just a small adjustment. We seek the manifestation instead of the one who manifests. To walk with him, to walk with Jesus step by step, then he takes care of these things. Well, I'm waiting on a phone call from the doctor. I'm waiting on a phone call from the doctor. What are you waiting on? I'm waiting on the phone call from the doctor. Well, no, we should be waiting on God. I just wait on God. He'll take care of it. He'll take care of it. I'm not concerned one bit. He'll take care of it. Why? Because I'm seeking Him. I'm seeking to know Him. Not what He can do for me. There's a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, YouTube video by a man by the name of Paris Redded. It's called Ten Shekels in a Shirt. Write that down. YouTube, 10 shekels and a shirt. There'll be a quiz later. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It blessed me when I watched that because it's one of the old paths. You know, that's one of the things that the Lord told me in Jeremiah 6.16. He said, walk in the old paths. Remember the old ways. Don't get caught up in this new thing that's going on. Look at the church at Laodicea. 
Hey, we're not poor, we're not naked, we're not blind. And what did Jesus say? You are poor, naked, and blind. And he was standing outside of that church knocking on the door. He wasn't even in that church. That's sad. And that is what we've got going on in this generation, in this time that we have right now. People have traded the joy of the Lord for entertainment. Mm. Amen. So, let's go back here into Psalm verse 40, uh, chapter 46. The Psalms, when we read through the Psalms, and you look at the Psalms, the Psalms are David crying out his heart. And his focus is waiting on the Lord. His focus is on the Lord. Remember in the book of Job, Satan went before God and all of the other angels and he said, Job only serves you for what you can do for him. And then God said, well, you can do anything but you can't touch his life and prove my righteous servant. So all of those things came upon Job. He never cursed God. His friends were wrong, right? That's what the whole book of Job actually, it, it's his friends saying, well, you must have really sinned or you must have done something. You must have said something. You've done something. So you need to confess. He said, I haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> haven't we heard that before? Well, brother, that, that situation has fallen upon you because there's sin in the camp. And since there's sin in the camp, this bad situation fell upon you. Not so. Sometimes things come into our lives. We don't have control over it, but God has control over it. Amen. And sometimes there's seasons, sometimes there are things that prune off self. It brings things up to the surface so that way we can take and look at them and say, this is not of God. This is not who I am in Christ. I can't change myself, so what do I do? Holy Spirit, crucify this. Holy Spirit, take this. Father, prune this unfruitful branch. You are the husband. I'm just a, a branch. Lord, this does not bring fruit. This does not bring glory and honor and praise to your name. God, take this out of my life. Because he's the only one that can. We have no power. We have no power over sin. But there is one who does. Who defeated sin, death, hell, the grave. And when we go to him... That's when the power of sin is broken over our lives. And he takes that out of our lives. So that way we can be more like Jesus. Another facet is so much cut off. So that way Jesus can shine through. The reason why that the world is not seeing the church right now is because self's in the way. Amen. Thanks, Al. <laughs> you want me to say that again? The reason why this world can't see Jesus Christ is because self Amen. is in the way. And that needs to be dealt with. It's like, and I've talked about this before, God sees you as a precious jewel, a jewel in his crown. That's how he sees you. But there's things that have to be before a diamond or before a, a rare jewel is set. It, there's, there's parts that have to come off. As he looks, he sees the imperfections. He sees the infractions. He sees those things. And so he takes them and puts them to the grinding wheel. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's not pleasant. <laughs> but the outcome's pleasant. He grinds those things which are not of him off. 
nails them to the cross, buries them with him, so that when the grinding's done, there's a new facet. And we know that the more facets a diamond has, or the more facets a stone has, the brighter it shines when the light hits it and the light goes through it. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 46, let's just read down through here. God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in trouble. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Therefore, we will, or therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. That's talking about you and I. God is in the midst of you, is he not? Amen. That's, what the whole, that's what the whole talk was at the, at the, at the woman at the well. She's saying, hey, we should be worshiping up here in Samaria. You Jews worship in Jerusalem. And Jesus said, there's coming a day when the worshipers aren't going to worship in a place, but the Spirit of God will be in you. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't have to go all the way to Jerusalem. We don't have to go all the way to Samaria. No. God is our refuge, and He is in us, and there's a river that flows. We sing that song, let the river flow, right? Take that which God has given you and let it flow through you and let it flow out of you to those around you. Quit trying to use it on yourself. It doesn't work that way. God gave it to you so that way you can give. Amen. That's the way love works. Love gives. Amen. Love is pure. And we take that which God has given us and poured into us, and we take that and we give it to those around us in our, in our areas of influence, those people that are around us who don't know Jesus, who are going to hell. Yeah. Let's get eternity-minded here. We're not playing games. We're not playing church. We're talking about people's eternal destination. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about lukewarm Christians who are on the fence, who need to make a decision whether they're going to serve the world or serve God. We're talking about people. People. When we look at somebody who's not saved, we should look at them at pity. Not look at those people in an angry way or look at those people that, that we are better. No, no, no. We all had our conversation in the world. We all have sinned and fell short of the glory of the God of this world, of this, or excuse me, of this, this whole universe. The God of this world, Satan, has blinded the eyes of mankind. So they can't see the light until God in his mercy opens their eyes and they can see the light. So which way do we pray? How do we pray for these? Oh God, open the eyes of the blind so they may see. Oh God, open the ears of the deaf so they may hear. Oh God, Heal the lame so they can run to you. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. That's pretty simple. It's interesting that one of these days, God himself said the elements are going to melt. And I've talked about this before. The elements on the periodic table. Any of you studied that? That's interesting that the elements, the very elements like H2O and hydrogen and all of that, they're just one day going to melt. That's for the physicist. Anyway, Michelle always pulled that chart out when she was studying for a chemistry degree and she would try to, I'd say, well, what would happen if you mix this and mix this? She said, we wouldn't be here. 
I said, okay. <laughs> the only difference between chemistry and cooking is you don't lick the spoon. There you go. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the Word of God. All right. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob, He is our refuge. We're not looking for refuge. We're knowing that He, He is our refuge. Amen. Now He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow, cutteth the spear asunder, and He burneth the chariots in fire. Verse 10, everybody knows this passage of Scripture. You've got it underlined in your Bible, don't you? You've got stars by it and everything else. Be still and know that I'm God. Be still and know that I'm God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Just be still and know that I'm God. Now this goes along with waiting on the Lord. Just be still and know that He's God. Those that wait upon the Lord. And we've talked about this. What is our ministry? Every one of us has a ministry. What is our first ministry? Colossians, or excuse me, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We all have this ministry, the ministry of seeking his face. That is our ministry. We minister unto Jesus. We seek His face. We minister to Him. We all with open face behold as in a glass the glory of the Lord and we are changed from glory to glory. From faith to faith, right? Alright, that's First, that's uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. Now we step down and they put a page break in there. Well, God didn't put that page break in there. Now take the page break out for just a second. We're not going to throw it away. It's a good place to start. But anyway, he says, now seeing that we have this ministry, what ministry? Go back up. The ministry of seeking his face. Not his hand. Not the things that he can do for us. Because those things will come. Seek first the kingdom and His righteousness, right standing with Him, and then all these other things will just be added. We're not praying for healing. We walk with the healer. Nowhere in Scripture, and I find it interesting, that all the way through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it never said in any of the Gospels that John, or Peter, or James, or Andrew, or Bartholomew, or Simon, or any of them were sick. That's pretty interesting. You walk three years with the Lord. Don't you think that would have been listed? Well, sure it would have been. Peter's mother-in-law got sick. Right? She had a fever. The Lord went over and healed her. Jesus' closest friend, Lazarus, he died. Mary and Martha had said they were very close to Jesus. He said, your friend died. He went over there and raised him up. So if any of the disciples would have got sick, don't you think that would have been listed in the Scripture? Don't you think the Holy Spirit would have put that in there for us? What did they do? They just simply walked with Jesus. What did He say? Follow me. That's your calling. There's your calling. Man, I want to know what the calling is for my life. Jesus said, follow me. Amen. That's the calling. He just said, he called to Matthew, follow me. He called to Thomas, follow me. Just follow me. Your ministry will come out of that. God will place you where He wants you to be. He'll do the things in your life. It's just simply following Him. How simple. And how simple is following Him? We take a step. Now, how do I know I'm in the right place? I'm kind of preaching over what we've been studying for a couple months, but how do I know I'm in the right place? I take my pulse. I take the pulse of my heart. Are my hands they do in His bidding? Are my feet walking in His ways? Do my eyes see Jesus only? Do my lips sing forth His praise? Is it all for Jesus? All for Jesus? 
this step was. Now it's the next step. All for Jesus, all for Jesus. Do my hands do his bidding? Do my feet walk in his ways? Do my eyes see Jesus only? Do my lips sing forth his praise? All for Jesus, all for Jesus. Then something comes along, rattles your world. This is where the warfare starts, and this is where it's all at. Will you keep your focus on him, or will you be consumed by the things of this world? Will the storms of life flatten your house? Or will the storms of life beat against your house and be a safe haven for those who don't know the Lord? That was from the Holy Spirit. <laughs> be still and know that I'm God. Amen. And when we don't hear from the Lord, when heaven seems silent, what do we do? Be just be still. We just be still and know he's God. All right. Psalm 27. Since we're here in the Psalms. Matter of fact, that's where we're going to stay, here in the Psalms. Everybody okay? Yeah, there's a couple. Okay. <laughs> a couple people are okay. Everybody else is, yeah, okay. Praying, thinking, <laughs> afraid to say anything. And thank you, Jim. And thank you, Frank. And thank you. <laughs> Psalm 27. The Lord is my light, and he is my salvation. It's the Lord. I'm not seeking light. I'm not seeking salvation. I'm seeking the Savior. Yes. Amen. Not seeking deliverance. I'm seeking the deliverer. Yes. Oh, Lord, I need delivered from this. Yes, you may. But seek the deliverer, and deliverance will come. That's what, see, I got out of bed this morning and I put both feet on the floor. Thank God I could stand. And I got out of the bed and stood up and the Lord said that. I mean, he did. He said it. He says, my children, my children are seeking that which I can do for them instead of seeking me. That really hurt the heart of the Lord. That breaks the heart of the Holy Spirit. Just think of us as parents. If the only reason why our kids get along with us and love us and want to have anything to do with us is because of what we give to them? That hurts, doesn't it? Can you imagine how it hurts pure love? Who is God? Who is everything? Who gives? Gave his son, gave his life. Gave us an inheritance, gave us the Holy Spirit. See, people are seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I need this baptism of the Holy Spirit. No, don't seek it that way. I need an intimacy with Jesus. He is the baptizer. See how that works? All right. The Lord is my light. My salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Man, they're talking about all of these things that are going on in the Ukraine and what are we going to do about that and what about this and all of that mess. You know what? I take a step and I fix my eyes on Jesus. Jesus said there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. And he told, he said, look up, your redemption draws nigh. When you see these things starting to come to pass, look up. Amen. Don't get tied up in this world. Don't get plugged into this world. Because all it is is death. All it is is it, it disturbs and disrupts your peace. Amen. 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 Has anybody found any good news on the TV? Besides Christian channels, of course. Anybody found any good news? Man, take your TV and throw it in the garbage. Praise God. I don't understand this, and I've said it before, why people pay good money to pump sewage into their house. I just don't understand that. I am at a loss. 
Though a host should encamp around me, my heart shall not fear. Why? Because the Lord's the light of my salvation. The Lord, it's the Lord that's my focus. Not what he can do, but it's the Lord. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that one thing, being so focused, one thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to, to behold the beauty of the Lord. Yes. To behold the beauty of the Lord, the ministry of seeking his face. Wonderful Jesus, precious Lord, glorious Savior. Precious, precious. Wonderful, wonderful. And in verse 8, when thou said, seek my face, seek ye my face, my heart, the core of my being, out of the heart flows the issues of life, right? That's what the scripture says. So, when thou said, seek ye my face, my heart, my core, the very everything that I am, said unto thee, Lord, thy face, Lord, will I seek. To know you, know, and we sang that song, knowing you, Jesus, there is no greater thing. There's no greater thing. So since we're in the Psalm, Psalm 39, Psalm 39, verse 7. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in Thee. What am I waiting on? My hope is in You, Lord. I'm waiting on You. Not what You can do for me, but Lord, I just wait on You. It's all about You. What did God want from the very beginning? What did He want? He wanted an intimate sea. He wanted a walk with Adam in the cool of the day to talk to him face to face, to walk with him, to be with him. That's what God wanted. And what's God going to do when he wraps all this back up? It's all going to revert back to God with us, God walking in us. Amen. That's what it all is going to come back to. God in us. And he's in us now. Amen. That's what he's wanted all along. But we're a special breed. We're a special people. We're set apart. We're the church. Amen. All right. Psalm 33, verse 18. So Psalm 33, verse 18 says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, have a reverential fear of God, unto them that hope in his mercy. You know, when we go to God, we ask for mercy. And his mercies are new every morning, right? Thank God for his mercy. That means we don't get what we deserve. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> that means all the things that we've done through the, through the day that has fallen short, that's not of the Lord, we ask for his mercy. So that way all of that's covered by the blood of Jesus and all of it's all uprooted. So that way we don't have a crop. Amen. 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 All right. Verse 19, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Oh, have you heard, brother, that food prices are going to just go up 300%. My God. My God. My God. We'll eat the good of the land. We will eat the good of the land. Why? I talked to Michelle about this. She said, food prices are going up and all this. I said, that's all right. I said, God takes care of us. 
God takes care of us. How much is milk a gallon right now? $2 and something? $3 and something? $4 and something? I had a person come and just give me milk. Out of the blue, went by a dairy, and the guy come out and says, here, just take this milk home. You got little ones? Yeah. Then they gave us some orange milk. I haven't drank yet. Um, that's saved for Eleanor. But anyway, but just gave it to us. Just gave it to us. Praise God. So I'm not, no. It says right here in His Word, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He's our help and our shield. How are we going to make it another day? Well, I don't know. I'm just taking another step, and I'm praising God that I can take a step. Amen. 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 See? See how easy it is? I take another step. And though I stumble... I shall not fall, nor utterly be destroyed. And I've stuff, and I have stumbled. <laughs> Ice skating with a bad leg is not something that you need to do. <laughs> you see our Olympic skaters and how they do those flips and stuff like that? They land them. <laughs> I haven't got that down yet. <laughs> our soul waiteth on the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For your heart shall rejoice in Him, not in what He does. Our heart rejoices in Him, in Him, because we've trusted in His holy name. Let Thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us, according as we hope in Thee, in Thee. See? Can you see it? That small little adjustment. And sometimes we can. Sometimes we can get off. O oh Lord, I, the, the healing... The manifestation, I'm waiting on a manifestation of the healing of God. That sounds wonderful, but yet what are you waiting on? You're waiting on the manifestation. Are you waiting on God? See? Seeking the gift instead of the giver. See how that works? I'm waiting on, a, well, I'm waiting on God to come through in my finances. You are. I'm just waiting on God. God will make a way. God, I'm waiting, you know, my kids, their lives, and blah, 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 you know. No, I'm just waiting on God now. He'll straighten it out. I'm going to keep my hand out of it, because when it's in my hand, I've got the problem. Amen. Amen. When it's in my hand, it's my problem. When it's in His hands, He'll take care of it. And I don't run around trying to take things out of God's hands. That's not brilliant, and that's not wisdom. No. All right. Psalm 59, verse 9. I'd ask Frank to come up, if you will, brother. Psalm 59, 9. This is an awesome scripture. Psalm 59, 9. Because of his strength, not mine, because of his strength will I wait upon thee, for God is my defense. Yes. Not the strength. God is my defense. God is my defense. All right. One more verse. Psalm 37, we'll go back there. Everybody all right? I think this is a psalm for the times that we're in right now. And people, I can tell you right now, the news media and all that's going on over here and going over there and this over here and that over there, it's all trying to draw your attention off of Jesus Christ. Stop. Stop. 
Behold, your redemption draws nigh. The Lord is coming back for those who are seeking his return. Didn't get a big amen on that one. Seeking his return and not what's going on in this world. Who are more plugged into the kingdom than plugged into this kingdom. That is seeking him with all that we are. Watch. That's what he said. Watch. Watch and be ready. Watch. Don't get plugged into the things of the world. Don't you think there were things of the world going on in Jesus' time? Sure there was. That was the Roman centurions. They were killing people. The Jews hated the Romans. The Romans hated the Jews. The Samaritans hated the Jews. The Samaritans hated the Romans. The Romans hated all of them. And it was a big mess. And Jesus just walking in the midst of it. And what was he saying? Seek first the kingdom and right standing with him. He said, all these things, all of these things, they're going to happen. Wars, rumors of wars. The earthquakes, the volcanoes that are blowing up, the weather, all of this stuff. It's just the world is in birth pains right now. And they're saying we need to go green so we can save this earth. They have not read the Bible. Because the Bible says that he's going to take this thing and he's going to burn it up with fire. And he's going to roll up the heavens like a scroll. And he's going to make a new heaven and a new earth. Glory to God. So they're sitting here saying, oh, we need to go green. I'm not going to go down that path. There's a theory behind that. But anyway, we'll stay with the Word of God. Fret not thyselves because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they, they, shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb. God's going to have his day. Verse 3. Trust in the Lord, and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Take no thought for raiment, or what you should eat, or what you should drink. Isn't the kingdom of God more than that? Take no thought. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Our delight's the Lord, being with Him, delighting in His presence. Oh God, we're so thankful that you were here with me, and you're walking with me, and I can sense your presence, and you're speaking to me, and you're leading me, and you're guiding me. I'm so thankful for just your presence. That's delighting thyself in the Lord. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of your heart. Why? Because your desires will be his desires. Why? Because who you've been walking with, who you've been spending your time with. That goes back to what we talked about this morning. Evil communication corrupts good manners. So if you hang out with bad people, guess what? Either A, they're going to see Jesus and they're going to change, or B, You're going to hang around them and you're going to change. Commit thy ways unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. How's he going to bring it to pass? That's his business. Amen? Amen. That's his business, how he brings it to pass. Since Gary's here, I'm going to tell a story. The John Deere tractor lawnmower story. Some of you heard it, some of you haven't. One day I was out mowing my yard and I was praying and I was push mowing the yard. I said, Lord, I'd like to have a John Deere tractor and mow this yard. And the Lord said, well, just ask me for it. And I said, okay, I'll ask God for a John Deere tractor. I went to church when Gary and I, Gary was helping me and he was the associate pastor there at Walnut Grove. I came in, I was excited and I said, God's going to get me a John Deere tractor. And Gary said, you don't have enough yard to mow with a John Deere tractor. 
And I said, well, the Lord sees fit that I'm going to get a John Deere tractor. Now, how in the world he's going to do it, I don't know. So one day we're out on a trouble call out in Fayette, and then the line had got hit by lightning and it blew it apart, and then there was this big tall clump of all kinds of horse weeds. So we was following the line, and in the middle of that pile of horse weeds was a John Deere tractor. So I asked the lady, I said, what are you going to do to this tractor? She said, if you want it, haul it off. I said, praise God. So we put, it on a, we put it on a trailer, we hauled it off, we got it over to David's house, we put gas in it, it started right up. Engaged the blades, it ran. Put a little key thing in because it wasn't going and it ran. I said, praise God, took it home. Glory to God. That's how, John, that's how God seemed fit to get me a John Deere tractor. Now, how he was going to do it, that was not, that was not up to me. But it, I got a John Deere tractor. So then I went to church and I told Gary, praise God, I got a John Deere tractor. I can't remember what you said. I know he was. <laughs> yeah, you probably did. Yard still not big enough, brother. I said, well, God seen fit to get me a John Deere tractor, and he did. Now, I didn't know how he was going to do it with that. But see, we can see here. We commit all thy ways to him. We trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. That sounds real familiar, doesn't it? Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Yeah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, not the ways, not the things. Acknowledge his presence. God, you're here with me, and that's enough. God, that's enough. No matter what, God, that's enough. Acknowledge everything, acknowledge him in the small things. Last night I asked the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to wear? He said, get in your closet and get this jacket out. I said, okay. And I start passing through my ties, and he said, here, you wear that tie with it. I said, okay. Now, you think that's silly. No. It's just a way of acknowledging God there with me and acknowledging his presence. And he directs my path. I acknowledge him in everything I do. I talk with him all the time because he's here. Amen? All right. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light. Who's going to bring forth righteousness in your life? He is. He is. Instead of trying, he will. He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, as the judgment, as the noonday, the highest point, the brightest the sun can get. Verse 7 Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. For him, not what he can do, not on the miracle, not on the healing, not on the finances, not on anything else. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Praise God. Everybody get something this morning? Yes. Well, Father, we do so love you. Thank you, Father, for this message that you've given us today in this time and in this time when, Lord, the world can be so distracting that, Lord, we have our brothers and sisters in the body of Christ who are seeking things instead of seeking you. Lord, help those turn that around. Let them see that it's you, that it's only you. Father, we see these things. And if there's areas in our life that need to change, Lord, we ask that this come to the surface by the Holy Spirit. And we know that it's the goodness of God that leads us to repent so that way we can change. It's not a bad thing, Lord. It's something that you bring to the surface, an area in our life where we've held on to self. 
that it needs to be buried and needs to be crucified so that Jesus shines through even more and more. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this church. Lord, thank you for this congregation. Lord, thank you for the people of God, your sheep, your beloved. And we praise you, Lord, and give you all the glory, honor, and praise forevermore. This we pray in our beloved Savior's name. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen.